Hi, I'm Justin from Blackline Racing. Today I've got an engine here from my customer that he brought in. He purchased this, has absolutely no background on it. Wants us to find out if it's worth using or if he's going to have to tear it down and, and do other things to it to be able to use it. Uh, today we are going to be teaching you the things to look at when you're either purchasing a used engine or a car. Uh, things to hopefully keep you out of trouble from buying something that's uh, kind of a lemon. So we are going to show you how to check your end play on your crank. We're going to show you how to find top dead center number one. We're going to be looking into the compression on the cylinders, the leak down test, and all of the red flags that are going to pop up that you should be able to identify to find out if you're buying something decent or not. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at before we get this thing bolted onto the dyno is whether it's got decent end play. The factory setting for your end play is going to be between three and a half and five thousandths. Uh, other engines that are meant to go up in the RPM range upwards of seven, eight thousand RPM, they usually set those tolerances looser between seven to nine. Uh, that would be most racing applications. Um, but what you're looking for is something below about seven on a used motor. So what you're going to have to use is a dial indicator. Okay, get your clutch off. It's easier to get it stuck onto the flywheel that way. You're going to bring it around to the dial indicator read zero, and you're going to pull all the way back. Make sure it's seated and reset your zero. Push forward. Looks like it's actually popping back a little bit. Right there. This has got about five thousandths of end play, which is well within spec. Now, what we are going to do is bring you over here to an engine that has terrible end play on it. It's a worn out old 40 horse. It has been down the road plenty of times. And this is bad end play. That right there you can see is in excess of 30 thousandths. When they get worn out this bad, the rear bearing is moving in the case and there's a good chance that the actual case itself is not saveable once it gets disassembled. You'll also have flywheel rear main seals go out on it every 1,500 to 2,000 miles. So if something like this is, is in this condition, it's at a point when it needs to be rebuilt. So be afraid of that. Okay, next we're going to get this thing up onto the dyno and we'll get back with you when we've got it bolted up. We're going to show you how to find top dead center number one, uh, what the timing marks look like so that you know what that is, and uh, we'll get going on the rest of the test. Okay, we've got the engine up mounted on our dyno. We've got a clean oil bucket underneath us. We're going to drop the oil out of the engine. This I don't believe has any, but we're going to drop it, look at the sump screen. We're going to look at the oil if it was to come out, see if we see any metal filings, anything like deteriorated bearings, anything that looks like it's had an internal engine failure whatsoever. That's going to give us an idea whether or not there's something wrong with the bottom end of this engine. So we're going to drop the oil first, if there is any. which there is not, so it's been stored dry. But we're still going to take a look at the sump screen. If there's anything in that, it's going to tell us if it's had any problems in the pack. Okay, so they've installed this without a sump screen. We can take a look up inside doesn't seem to be any metal filings on the sump plate or up inside. I don't see anything scary at this point in time. Let's take a look at the sump plate just a little bit closer. It's pretty black, which is pretty normal. What you want to do is get down to the bottom and see if there's any shiny stuff sitting in that oil. Which there seems to be just a little bit. Nothing that indicates like a massive bearing failure. But it has had some stuff going through here. Now that doesn't necessarily condemn this engine, but what it does say is, okay, this, this motor has been run. It's just not probably a fresh rebuild. That's old oil. So we don't quite know what's going on in the bottom end just yet. Uh, oil pressure, when we go to start this thing eventually, is going to tell us whether or not it's got good bearing life left in it. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to find top dead center number one uh, on your engine so that you're able to do a leak down test properly. Uh, and find out what your, 
your cylinders and your heads are actually looking like inside your motor, whether things are right or wrong. So we're lucky because we have a pulley here that's, that's got all the timing marks on it, makes it very simple. Uh, if you don't have that and you've got an OEM style pulley, I've got a couple here I can show you, the two most common. Your top dead center mark on this style pulley is going to be this notch. These other two marks are your advanced notches, seven and a half and ten degrees. So what you're going to do is you're going to mark that with either some white out or some white paint or something so it's easy to see. And then you're going to go 180 degrees off of it and you're going to mark down here. That'll be your bottom dead center mark. Those are the two you're going to need to do a leak down test properly. This other style is pretty common as well. There's a big notch taken out on the side of the pulley that's closest to you when you're looking at it. That's your top dead center. This is a retard mark for a dual vacuum advanced distributor. So you mark that again and you're going to go 180 off of it and that's going to be your bottom dead center. Like I said, it's a lot easier when you have an actual uh, notched uh, timing pulley there with all the marks on it. That obviously makes it so much easier. So what we're going to do is, we're going to roll it around to where we see a top dead center. You never want to trust the distributor because they're put in 180 off all the time. People put in distributors all the time wrong and they're not correct. So you can't always trust the rotor. Right now this distributor is in fact installed correctly. I put it in before the video. Uh, right now we are pointing at number three. But how we can tell if it is for sure and it's not number one we're going to come around here and find out if the valves themselves are actually loose. Number three, where this has chromoly, you're looking for anywhere between zero and three thousandths lash. And these are loose. If you go over to the number one, you're going to find some tight valves. Your intake doesn't move, exhaust doesn't move, and I can't spin this push rod. So what's happening is, is the cam is beginning to open that valve and everything's seized up. Okay, so we're going to start with number one. We're going to go over 180 degrees to the next time it comes over. This will be bottom dead center. We started on three with our firing order is one, four, three, two. So you're going to go from three to number two. That's your bottom dead center mark for number two. We'll bring it back around another 180 degrees. You're going to be top dead center once more. That should be number one. You should have loose valves over here, which we have loose and loose. Now some engines that have been run for a long time without proper maintenance or bad valve seats in the heads, a lot of different things like that, you can have tight valves all the way around and that test is not going to work. So you may have to do a valve adjustment prior to doing these tests. As long as all the valves have got just a little bit of lash on them and you can spin that push rod, these tests will be able to be performed properly and they will be accurate. Uh, we will be doing a later video on how to do a valve adjust properly on chromoly and both aluminum push rods. Uh, but we're not going to cover that on this right now. Okay, now we're going to show you guys how to do a leak down test. It's a uh, better test than a compression test because it tells you where your, your leakage in your cylinders and your heads is going. Uh, it'll tell you whether you've got bad rings, whether you've got a cylinder head leak at the top of the top of this uh, cylinder, or whether you've got leaking valves, intake or exhaust. Uh, this will allow you to find out whether or not the engine is going to be able to run properly, pass emissions, if it's going to be low on power, if you're going to have tuning issues. Um, what we're, we are on top dead center number one where we left the engine. We're going to start by showing you the tools here to do this. This is a cylinder leak down tester. Uh, you should be able to pick one of these up at a decent parts store. This will be the most expensive tool we use in this video. If you have a 12 millimeter long reach spark plug, you'll probably have to get some type of uh, adapter for your spark plug hole. Most of these testers are going to come with a 14 millimeter insert. This head actually has 14 millimeter long reach plugs, so we won't be needing to use that. But if you do, you need to make sure you have that adapter. So we're going to come over here. We're on top dead center number one on the compression stroke. Both of our rockers are loose. The whole cylinder in theory is, is sealed. And now we're going to pump 100 PSI into the cylinder and see how much of it is staying in there. Before you do this, always make sure your ports are clean. Make sure you know nothing's going to get blown through or, or fall in before you do any of these tests. You don't want any debris from being stored, open ports and things getting into your motor. Uh, this one has been wrapped up. The ports are very clean. Heads have never been run on, so we're not worried about that. So what we do, we screw our adapter in here. It's got an O-ring on the base. and You just turn it as tight as you can by hand. That should seal up the top of the cylinder there. We have our cylinder leakage tester hooked up to our compression, our, our air hose line. And we're going to run this thing up. 
and we're going to watch what the gauges do. The first gauge is the amount of PSI of air I'm pumping into this cylinder. That's what's pumped in. This is what's staying there. This is a good cylinder. Now we're still going to go looking for leaks even though it reads about 99 out of 100. So this is good sign for this engine. We're going to grab my stethoscope and we're going to go look in the ports and listen to see if the rings sound like they're leaking. You're going to stick it down the back side of the intake valve. There's a very slight leak down here that I can hear. These heads have never been run or seated in, so that will probably go away once it gets started up. If you have an intake manifold and a carburetor on top of your motor, which most of you probably will when you're doing this, you're going to take your carburetor and open the throttle up. You get this down past your carburetor and you'll be able to hear it. It'll echo through the intake manifold. Uh, same thing with your exhaust. We're going we're gonna to stick this up in here in the exhaust port. Try to hit the back side of the valve, see if we can hear any air escaping. This one sounds really good. I can't hear anything coming out of it at all. I'm all the way on the back side. I'm trying to get as, as close to the, where the valve seating area is. It sounds good. Now on your motor, if you've got an exhaust, obviously go to the closest exit to that that uh, to the hole you're trying to test. If you've got a dual tip exhaust and you're doing number one, you're going to want to be sticking it in this exhaust pipe. That's the closest it's going to be. If you got a stinger or a four into one header, you just stick it there and you're going to listen for anything leaking. Anything that's real bad, you'll be able to hear. Um, if your valve cover's on and you're doing this, which it shouldn't be, but if it is and you're just checking, you can check in your oil uh, fill up or if it's got an open hole here, obviously that's the same thing. So this is going to be whatever is coming past your rings and you're always going to hear a ring you're never going to have it fully sealed up except for extreme race engines with total seal piston rings and things like that you're always going to hear something come past the numbers we're seeing are fantastic on that cylinder and i would call that a grade a cylinder you're 98 to 99 pounds out of 100 tiny leak on the intake probably going to seat in in the first 15 20 minutes of dyno time not going to be a problem um, now we're going to repeat the process on all four of the cylinders and make all the notes for everything on this this paper here. Just break it up into four sections. You're also going to use this paper for doing your compression test. And once you're all said and done, you can go through this and this will get, basically give you the idea of what condition every cylinder in your engine is in. Okay? So, number one, 98 out of 100 PSI. Small intake, leak. That's basically the only thing we found. Shouldn't be a problem. We're gonna repeat the other three on this, this uh, test and then we'll get back in touch with you, show you what we found. Uh, if we do find anything else, we'll show you obviously on film. If not, if it's all great, which we're hoping it is, I can tell my customer he's got a decent motor. So we're gonna go do that. We'll get back in touch with you guys when we're finished. Okay, we're back. Uh, we've just completed our leak down test of this engine came back fantastic. My customer is going to be very excited. Uh, we have numbers here between 98 and 99 out of 100. This is all basically what a brand new engine looks like without ever being worn out. Uh, obviously these heads haven't been run but we weren't sure what the condition of the cylinders were going to be. They look fantastic. No ring leakage hardly at all. Uh, we do have small valve leaks. Like I said these are brand new cylinder heads. We're hoping that those will actually go away once they get run in. We've got our dyno time in, 20 minutes of run time on it. Uh, the numbers you're going to be looking for to be afraid of is anything below about 85 pounds out of 100 pounds. When you're starting to lose down to there, you're actually losing power. It's going to start running a little bit doggier. Your, your compression, your cranking compression is going down. Uh, you're not going to be burning your fuel all the way. You start to have emissions issues. Uh, and that's when you've basically, you know, you're going to need to either rebuild a top end or maybe just re-ring some cylinders. It all depends on what you find. So, but this is going to be the test that's going to show you whether it's the rings or the heads that have got the issues. Luckily for my customer, like I said, again, this is, this is a fantastic motor. Uh, the number one rule to remember when you're doing this test is when you go to do the, the cylinder you're working with, make sure it's on top dead center on the compression stroke to that cylinder. Uh, the test for that, again, is just making sure that both of the rockers are loose and it's not opening the valves at all. You can spin the push rods. If it's doing that, the valves are completely closed and it's at top dead center on the compression stroke. The top dead center is going to be one and three. Your bottom dead center mark is going to be cylinders two and four. 
Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, obviously, just watch this movie again if you didn't get that. It's pretty simple once you've done it once and you've, you've worked your way through it. Uh, now we're going to go on to doing a compression test. We're not worried about this, any, this engine anymore, but we are kind of wondering what compression ratio this might be set at. This will give us some type of idea and a window into what this might be. You know, if it's 7.5 to 1 or if it's 10.5 to 1. Uh, if the cranking compression is super high, obviously you need to run a higher octane fuel. If they've got this thing set at anything above about 9.5 to 1, uh, you're right on the verge of not being able to run 91 octane in a street car anymore. Uh, sand cars run by a, a little bit different standards, but street cars, which is what we're talking about here for the most part, you want to run something below 9.5 to 1 on your compression. If you're down at sea level, you probably want to stay about 9 to 1 on your compression. So we're going to do a compression test here for you real quick. Oh, crap. Let me get you the tools and show you how, how this works. Pretty standard compression tester. This is a Mac Tools, but you can get one of these over at Harbor Freight. A uh, cheap one will do you just fine if you're a home jobber. Uh, like I said again, I use the exact same tool that I use for my leak down tester for this. Lots of times you'll have to have one for one or the other. Um, I've got to actually install this into the end of it. That's my Schrader valve. That'll make it so the needle doesn't just bounce, but it actually holds the pressure in the, in the tool itself. Uh, so let me get this hooked up on number one and get behind the starter and we'll show you guys how this works. Okay, we've got our compression tester hooked up on our engine here. This is cylinder number one. Again, the firing order on this, this engine is one, four, three, two. Cylinders are cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, and cylinder four. That's just important so you make sure you get the notes on the right, the right uh, spot on your paper. So we get this hooked up. You've got your Schrader valve installed. You're gonna watch your, your gauge here. We're gonna pan in on that for you. I'm gonna crank it over about five or six times. And if you're going to be doing this with an intake on this in a carburetor, you need to make sure you crank with all of your spark plugs out and the throttle open. If you don't do that, you won't get an accurate reading. Uh, if you're cranking over a stock motor with the throttle closed, you can lose upwards of 30, 40, 50 PSI of what it's really doing because it's sucking against the throttle plate. So make sure your spark plugs are out and make sure your, your intake is, is wide open. Obviously this is, it's just a long block. So I'm gonna crank this over, I'm gonna see what this thing makes. Okay, so we're making a cranking compression of somewhere around 150 to 160 PSI. That's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of an 8.5, 9 to 1 motor. Uh, that obviously is going to change based upon your intake design and your camshaft profile. But we're not seeing 200, so we know we're not sitting in 11.5, 12 to 1, you know, race engine compression area. So that's probably pretty good. Now we're going to go through, check all the other cylinders, and we're going to make sure that they all are seeing close to the same numbers. You want everything in within about 5 to 7 PSI. On a new motor, you should be really close to right on. Uh, if there is a problem, that's when you know you're going to have issues with possibly your camshaft could be going bad, a bad lobe, uh, other things of that nature. We know that we've got good valves and good rings in this, so we're assuming this is going to come out the same. So on a stock engine, you're going to be looking for between 110 and 130 PSI for a healthy, good stock 1600 uh, set, you know, somewhere around 7.5, 8 to 1 compression. Uh, these numbers are a little bit higher, obviously. It's, bigger, it's a bigger engine, uh, and you've got a higher compression ratio, most likely, in this thing. So, but these are good numbers. You should be able to run pump gas around 150 to 160 PSI of cranking compression. So we're going to finish up the rest of these, and we're going to write it all down on our paper, and we're going to tell you what we came up with. Talk to you in a minute. Okay, we finished our compression test on my customer's engine here. Uh, it came back really decent. Cylinder number one had 160 PSI of cranking compression. Two had 170. And both three and four had 175 PSI. 175 PSI is getting on the verge of not being able to run 91 octane in like a daily driver bug situation. Uh, especially if you're in a hotter climate, you're going to be sitting over 90 degrees in the hot summer days. You might have a problem. This customer is going to be putting this actually in a trike that weighs about 1,200 pounds. So he's not going to have such a big deal. He's not going to be making a lot of, a lot of heat with this thing. And it's going to be wide open. So I'm not too worried about that. He should be able to run 91 octane. 
Um, so the motor itself looks to be pretty decent based on all the things we've seen. He was told that this was a larger 2 liter engine. We're going to show you how to do kind of a backyard test on whether it is stroked or not. There's a lot of people out there that are selling motors online as big 2 liters and people pull them down and find out they're a 1915 or an 1835. If it's actually a stroke 2 liter, you can actually tell that it has a stroker crank in it for the most part. You won't be able to tell what size it is because you don't know what size the pistons are, but it'll give you a good idea of what it could be. So what we're going to do, find yourself a piece of rod, piece of hanger, anything nice and straight that you can stick down into that spark plug hole. This is a little easier for us right now because there's no cylinder tin or an intake manifold in the way, but you can do this in the car. You just got to get the right length of rod to do so and a magic marker. So what we're going to do, we're going to come over to cylinder number two and we're going to bring it up to top dead center on its compression stroke. Which is going to be right here. Our pulley says bottom dead center, our rotor's pointed in the right direction, and we have loose rockers. So we are on top dead center. You're going to run your piece of rod in. Now you're going to be going through a piece of cylinder tin most likely. When I don't have cylinder tin on it, I mark it down at the spark plug hole because it's the most accurate place to do it. When you're doing it in a car with, with cylinder tin on it, you can use the edge of the cylinder tin to mark it. It'll be somewhere around here. Wherever that's sitting, make your mark. I'm going to do it down here on the first thread. Okay? Keep a good eye on where you did that because you're going to want to mark it in the exact same place when you roll that piston down to bottom dead center. So roll that down to where it's at the bottom of its stroke, which is going to be on top dead center on your pulley. We're on top dead center number one now, which means our number two cylinder is all the way at the bottom. Now take, line your mark straight up and down so you're on the same side of it. You're going to run this thing in the exact same way you did until it bottoms out on your piston. Make sure you mark it in the exact same place. Now granted this is not exact, but it will tell you if you've got a 69 millimeter stroke crank in there or something else. And you can get really, really close. Now you can either use a precision ruler or a set of dial calipers or, dial calipers or a set of uh, electronic calipers such as this. Put it on millimeters. We're going to basically start at one mark and put it on the same spot on the same other mark. Right now we're reading about 84 and a quarter on our millimeter scale. You probably got an 84 millimeter stroke crank in there, which means this is there's a good chance this is actually a 2332 cc engine. Our customers gonna be very excited about that. It's a good motor. He picked it up for cheap, and he's gonna be very excited about that. Um, the only other thing I can tell you to look out for, uh, obviously I can't do it on this. This is not set up to run. Is going to be your oil pressure. That's the other integral thing to your engine, to being a long-lasting, good-running engine, is whether or not you're able to make oil pressure when it's cold and when it's hot. So you can pick up a cheap gauge like this over at Harbor Freight. That's where this one's from. It is cheap. It's worked for me. I've had it for 10 years. It's great. It's less than 20 bucks. Basically, when you start this thing up with a stock oil system on it, you can. this is the same thread. It's an eighth inch pipe thread. You can unscrew your stock uh, switch from here. This screws right into there. Get that in there and you're going to start your engine with it cold. You should see Usually, at an idle when it's cold on a good oil system, you'll see at least 45 pounds when it's ice cold. Really good oil systems that have had a blue printed bottom end, all the oil tolerance has been checked, it's got the right size pump, probably a 26, you're going to see upwards of 75 to 80 pounds when it's cold. Uh, when it cools, uh, when it heats up and the oil is up to temp, meaning anything over about 175, 180 degrees, your bottom oil pressure should usually on a good motor be at least 15 psi. Uh, your oil light's going to flicker on that switch from your stock, your stock switch at about seven and a half pounds if you've got a good switch. Uh, so you can kind of see that if you're at least about 10 pounds over that, you've got a really decent motor. Uh, you, these always have flickering oil lights. It's a common problem. If it does that when it's hot and you've got it heated up, you know that there are problems internally or it wasn't built properly to begin with. Um, when you rev it up and, you, yeah, and it's cold, you shouldn't see anything more than about 120 psi. If it's doing that, there are other problems. They may have the wrong oil pressure relief springs in the system, all kinds of things like that. Uh, when it's hot and you rev it up, a really good motor, you'll see about 75, 80 pounds. 
Uh, on something that's getting worn out, when you're revving, you'll be seeing about 35 to 45 pounds when it's hot. So that's the other test you can do. That will give you a decent idea on what your oil uh, tolerances inside your engine are like and what your oil pump looks like. If there are issues with that, the only other place you can check before you tear the engine down is obviously pop the oil pump out, take a look at the gears. If the oil pump has problems or has a really thick gasket on the front of it, you could have that problem. Most likely it's, it's bearing failure and uh, the oil tolerances are too wide. Um, that pretty much concludes our, our checkup on this engine and uh, just kind of like the bulletins on, on what it takes to find out whether you're getting a good product or not just so you don't get in, into a motor that you find out is, has been known to be bad and has issues and you're going to be end up rebuilding it anyways. Um, like us on Facebook if, if you liked this, uh, this movie. If you have any other ideas, let us know. We love being able to help people figure out these things on their own and, and there's a there's, it's a lot of fun to get into this, this Volkswagen stuff. So please feel free to leave comments and uh, let us know if you have any other ideas for videos. Thank you very much.